Hello everyone. In today's video, I will explain adrenergic neurotransmission. By now you must have seen the board behind me full with complex figure and text. But don't worry. I am here to explain you and I am here to make it as easier as possible. So, adrenergic neurotransmission is the topic and if this is the topic, it has to do with the adrenergic neurotransmitter. So the transmission of the nerve impulse is through adrenergic neurotransmitters which are epinephrine and norepinephrine. So when epinephrine and norepinephrine are the neurotransmitter, first it has to be synthesized, right? So I will tell you the different steps which are involved. First, it all starts from synthesis, then it gets stored and then released and then what is the fate of those neurotransmitters. So I will explain by the help of figure as well as the text part. Now getting uh, straight into the topic, the first and the foremost step is the synthesis of the neurotransmitter and it all starts from tyrosine. It all starts from the tyrosine, the transport of tyrosine. So the tyrosine gets transported inside the neurons by the help of a transporter which is the symport, which is a sodium symport. It takes the sodium also inside. So by this, by the help of this transporter, the tyrosine gets inside, which is then converted to dopa and then dopa gets converted to dopamine and then dopamine is, is transported inside the vesicle. This part I have zoomed it out here. So I'll explain this part over here. So be with me. Synthesis, the starting material is uh, the tyrosine and then tyrosine gets converted to dopa by the help of the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase, which is written as TH over here. And then this is the, this is the cofactor which is necessary for this conversion. And this very particular step is a rate limiting step of the whole pathway. Then the dopa gets converted to dopamine by the help of the enzyme aromatic L-amino uh, acid decarboxylase. Now the cofactor which uh, is necessary here is pyridoxal phosphate. So you can say the tyrosine gets converted to dopamine by hydroxylation and decarboxylation. Now till dopamine it's over. Then dopamine gets converted to norepinephrine. Norepinephrine, the neurotransmitter. And then this conversion takes place by the help of dopamine beta hydroxylase and then ascorbate is the cofactor which is necessary over here. And then norepinephrine gets converted to epinephrine in the chromaffin cell especially uh, and uh, in the adrenal gland. And this conversion takes place by the help of the enzyme phenyl ethanol amine and methyl transferase. And the cofactor is here as adenosyl methionine. So this is how there is formation of norepinephrine and epinephrine and dopamine from tyrosine. So I'll get back here. Now tyrosine, uh, dopamine is formed here, right? Now the dopamine is taken inside, the dopamine is taken inside the vesicle by one transporter. So now we'll be dealing with the next step which is storage. Now see, dopamine gets gets uh, stored in the vesicle and that is stored when the dopamine is carried inside by a transporter known as VMAT that is vesicular monoamine transporter VMAT vesicular monoamine transporter and this takes dopamine inside in lieu of the two hydrogen atom so hydrogen atom goes outside whereas dopamine comes inside one molecule so now the dopamine gets is stored inside the vesicle and that dopamine gets converted to norepinephrine norepinephrine and then from here conversion to epinephrine is in the adrenal gland now it is stored here now norepinephrine is stored by along with the other cotransmitter namely NPY and ATP. NPY is neuropeptide Y and ATP. Now, the, the concentration 
or uh, depends concentration of the transmitter uh, that, that, that norepinephrine and NPO and NT, uh, ATP depends upon its location. Okay, the uh, where norepinephrine has to be released, that means there in the storage vesicle, more of norepinephrine will be there. There would be one vesicle only in which all the three neurotransmitter or cotransmitter will be stored, but the release will be specific to the location. So I have shown three different vesicles. Just to explain that what happens when norepinephrine release and uh, what happens when NPY is released and what happens when ATP is released. So don't con get confused. These are not three uh, different vesicles. One only vesicle where all the three neurotransmitters are stored. Now, storage, there are two types. The large uh, dense uh, core uh, storage vesicle and then small, uh, small dense core vesicle. The large dense core vesicle is specifically for the chromaffin cell that is for epinephrine whereas other is for norepinephrine and ATP. Now this is stored. Now when a transmitter or the co-transmitter is stored in the vesicle that means it is ready to be released. Right. Now this vesicle is ready to be released and release process, release process is through exocytosis. In my previous video of uh, Cholinergic neurotransmitter, I have explained this step. Here also I will be explaining. See, the vesicle contains some protein. These are named as synaptobrevin, synaptotagmin and RAB3A or B. This one. So, uh, the first and the second and the third. Now, these are there and at this membrane, there are also three protein here. This is the red one. Here is a syntaxin. The blue one is your MUNC18 and this one is an SNAP25. Now what is the use of these proteins? See, the release is based on the depolarization. So upon depolarization of the terminal, what happens? There is influx, opening of the voltage gated channel, voltage gated channel and then there is influx of calcium from here. Influx of calcium from here and then this calcium makes a complex with this protein this is known as snare snare pro protein so complex mix and then there is there is movement of this vesicle near this membrane and then as soon as it comes it binds with this calcium complex calcium protein complex this complex and then there is a release there is the release of the neurotransmitter so see this is not a specific this is applicable for here also and here also i have shown it only at one place so it, when it binds makes a complex then there is exocytosis and release of atp or npy or any based upon the location so now this is release now what after release what will happen to the neurotransmitter that is known as fit fit of the neurotransmitter now there can be multiple type of fit first is either the neurotransmitter like norepinephrine it will go and bind to the specific receptor post-junction receptor right like norepinephrine can bind to the adrenergic receptor that is alpha and beta receptor now this type of uh, receptor are the gpcr receptor right having seven transmembrane helical structure so wherever this type of structure is there that means it, these are gpcr mediated action so it will go on alpha and beta and it will give its action similarly npy neuropeptide y will act on this receptor y1 to y5 there are different types and the atp will act on this p2y type of receptor or P2X1 to P2X7 type of receptor. Now this is channel mediated receptor. Okay. This is one fate. Another fate is it may act on the autoreceptor or the heteroreceptor. Which will ultimately affect the release of the neurotransmitter. So regarding norepinephrine what will happen? Norepinephrine go and bind to the alpha 2 presynaptic alpha 2 receptor which will cause the inhibition of the release of norepinephrine itself. Otherwise, this norepinephrine will bind to the beta 2 receptor, again presynaptic. And in this case, this uh, binding will cause the stimulation of release of norepinephrine. 
and otherwise norepinephrine will be transported back inside through a transporter called norepinephrine transporter inside okay or the norepinephrine may get this this is the uptake one or norepinephrine can be sent through ENT extra neuronal transporter extra neuronal transporter that is uptake two now coming to the NPY NPI NPY will act over here and then NPY may act on the presynaptic receptor Y2 also which will cause inhibition of its release and ATP what will happen ATP release of ATP when it is released it will either go and bind to the postjunctional receptor and stimulate it or it will cause it will cause the stimulation of this presynaptic receptor P1 presynaptic receptor P1 which will ultimately inhibit it inhibit its release this this will cause the ATP the ATP will be converted to adenosine and then adenosine will be stimulating the P1 receptor or it could, could be metabolized to ADP or AMP otherwise also this uh, ATP can be metabolized to releasable nucleotide here okay so this would be the fate of the neurotransmitter along with that for norepinephrine the fate would be the metabolism okay metabolism of this metabolism of NPY and metabolism of norepinephrine norepinephrine or dopamine or the catecholamine they are metabolized by the enzyme monoamino oxidase and CUM to catechol or methyl transferase the monoamino oxidase they are responsible for metabolizing this norepinephrine when they are in the cytosol or the nerve terminal whereas CUMT is responsible for metabolizing the catechol amine which is endogenously released or which is administered so the catechol uh, uh, CUMT and monoamino oxidase itself is a wide a very big topic uh, so I will not go into uh, such details so uh, this was there now I will take you through the journey of drugs which inhibit any of the step here the first drug being me tyrosine me tyrosine and this will inhibit the enzyme tyrosine hydroxylase to inhibit the further step the second is the, the storage storage one storage step this will be inhibited by the drug reserpine and my age, I am talking only about the norepinephrine, not the neuropeptide Y or no, not ATP. So this will be inhibited, the storage will be inhibited by reserpine. The next is the release process. Release process of norepinephrine will be inhibited by Britalium or guanathidine. After that, there is one more drug which will inhibit this, this uptake mechanism through norepinephrine transporter and that is called cocaine group, cocaine or the tricyclic antidepressant group of drug will inhibit this particular step. Now coming to the very interesting part, I will tell you what happens when there is a deficiency of some enzyme over here. It was seen that in the laboratory animal, uh, when tyrosine hydroxylase was uh, deficient, then it was fatal situation for the animal. Knockout animal of tyrosine hydroxylase uh, showed that there was there was a rigidity, there was hypokinesia, and there was a lower level of dopamine and norepinephrine metabolites like homovanilic acid. And the situation was fatal because of altered cardiac effect because of deficiency of catecholamines. The another is the, when there was a deficiency of dopamine beta hydroxylase, then it was seen that there was higher level of dopamine, higher level of dopamine, and then symptoms like uh, retrograde ejaculation, then the droopy eyelids uh, was seen here in this case and then later on it was seen that NAT that is norepinephrine transporter knockout and dopamine transporter knockout showed that there was increased level of norepinephrine here so extracellular increased level of norepinephrine was seen or catecholamine or intracellular 
lower level was C. So this was an interesting thing which was seen when there was the deficiency of tyrosine hydroxylase, the dopamine beta hydroxylase or the NET and DAD knockout animals.